we feel all of that. And literally, you know, serial killers and uh, people with uh, mental disorders, some of them have the disconnect literally in their That's brain, exactly in right. synapses That's in it. their brain. And uh, and they, they don't see killing as uh, there's no remorse. Exactly. No, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I, it's amazing to me that this barbarianism, right? It seems to me that that part of the world, terrorism, you know, based on family constellations, is another timeline that is stuck in time of the barbarians and is still trying to perpetuate a reality, a humanity, based on past ways, but that are, you know, are killing families and the future of, of a lot of people. So anyways, I'm, I'm now, I'm now into deep contemplation about it. It's, it's, it's intense. So, but I think, but 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 we look at what what balance is we could say to swing the pendulum the other way oh, those of that. us who are connected to our hearts yes who are capable of loving we need yes. to amp that up we need to magnify it because there it's been said and i think it was Marianne Williamson that said it she, there are no half-hearted terrorists isn't that true wow so, wow no wow terrorists what about us we have to be wholehearted in loving we have to love like an extremist oh love my like- gosh could you there, there are no half-hearted terrorists they're committed they're so committed and they have so much discipline we can learn from them how to to do that right in the opposite Flip the switch, then flip the switch the other way, yeah. and then wow. flip it to love <laughs> with oh that kind of commitment and or you know drive. <laughs> I, I love that. You know that's so true. You know people that are like terrorists, they are so committed to their cause. Yes. We can learn from where we can learn from them: commitment, discipline, yes. consistency. Yes training, uh, right. you know, doing whatever it takes. They do that. I, mu- I must give them, I must give them, uh, you know, to Caesar so, what is of Caesar. So, yes. That's why it's on. like, well, what's love training? You know, how do you reconnect? So rewire, reconnect. That's what the pocketbook of peace was meant to do. Okay, mm. here's, there's really lots and lots of ways to do that. But I just, oh, let's pick 30 ways. So he, that'll get you started. So that's why it's it, it's like, here's some ways to get you started. Everything in there, it's like reconnect. Here's one way. Here's another way. And when you reconnect, you connect love. You're, you know, you're connecting the love, you know, the love wiring in there. Wow. Yeah, it's kind of like you're doing, you are doing uh, emotional, spiritual and brain rewiring surgeries, right? You're, you are you are helping people, and and I love that you published that the pocketbook of peace. That actually it was translated, I believe, in a couple of languages. Correct? Yeah, right now it there's Spanish um, and actually Portuguese now. And oh, um, nice. I, my plan in going forward um, is now to expand that, and and I'd like to have it translate to the seven languages of the United Nations. So oh we'll have, wow, we'll get Russian and Mandarin and. French, Italian, German. <laughs> um, yeah, I would love to see it in Serbian, hear it. Let me tell you why I love that language so much. I have a lot of friends. Actually, I have interviewed a couple of incredible Serbian leaders, teachers, women in this oh, really? podcast that are coming out. Yeah. So well, I'll put you in connection with some of them because they're powerful ladies and their language. It has such, such a beautiful rhythm. We should talk about that because my future daughter-in-law is Ser- is Serbian. Oh my goodness! No, no, I tell you, Kia, this is like we can use the podcast just to find the synchronicity. No, parents immigrated. She grew up with bombs growing off. She, it, they left when she was six. Bombs were going off. You're hiding in a closet. Yeah, so yeah. Parents- I just I just interviewed someone who had to be a refugee who was listening to bombs on the on the apartment next door. Yep, amazing! Wow, amazing! Wow. Well, we'll we'll definitely put you in contact with them, and they are in they are they are guests of the podcast too. So, anyways, so you you published the pocketbook of peace, and you know I remember I went through it. Schools went through it, and it was to return to the sacredness of life. Correct? Yes. To re and then and then what does that actually mean? Because some people right. thought that was religious, um, right? So therefore, um, I. Another way of saying that is to respect the mm. dignity of life oh, in our dignity of life. And that is the same thing. Honor the sacredness, respect the dignity. Same, same thing. 
beautiful honor the sacredness and respect the dignity how simple yet how complicated for uh, some of us that have been trained to make everything complicated right to 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 get proof of being a good human instead of just being a good human because that that feels that feels the right thing to do it's a moral duty of the soul so you do the pocketbook of peace And then, you know, I know you were in a documentary. You were in our documentary, United State of Mind. Everybody go watch it. Everybody (laughs) watch it. It's a beautiful transformational film. Yes. Yes. Directed by director Matthew J. Peters. Oh, he's brilliant. 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 What can I say? Produced by me. (laughs) Produced by me. Another brilliant. Thank you. (laughs) Incredible team. Incredible team and incredible teachers. The, The film is called United State of Mind. You can watch it for free at... Uh, USM, USMthemovie.com is out there. We put it as a contribution to humanity, the United State of Mind, and Kia makes a beautiful contribution in it. And you also did another rock doc, uh, documentary or in a film, right? Which one was that? Well, there's one on Netflix. It was produced by a major producer in India, Amir Khan Productions. It's called wow. Rub- it's called Rubaru Roshni. It, that means facing the light. And it's um, the theme is forgiveness. There's three... Um, violent murders that all took place in India. And mine is one of that. My story is one of them, the story of Alan and Naomi. So there's three stories, one political, one religious, and the other one was this Mumbai terrorist attack. And wow. so my, there's, yeah. Um, so details of all three stories and their outcomes and how forgiveness played into that. It's a very, it's rather emotional, um, but very powerful at the same time. Wow, so, so powerful. And well, and you've been doing countless interviews. I know you presented uh, keynotes. Uh, I know you spoke for a group of Marianne Williamson, etc. And and then you wrote this book, Forgiveness is a Choice, and Penguin Publishers publish it. Tell us a little bit about this book. Okay, well, um, I, I basically, in it, I, I realized the simplest way to create the book on forgiveness, because they asked me, to um, show other show people how to create peace in their lives. And I knew forgiveness was a key element and they wanted that to be a theme that wove through it. But how does that get applied day to day? And so each chapter, I create a whole chapter for each of the points in the pocketbook of peace. So there's 30 chapters. And then I gave examples from some of my experience in India, especially that um, were examples of how that can play out in life Either it was a story that I was involved with or someone else that I knew, um, especially that took place in India when I was there um, to give people um, so they could see on a personal level what that might look like in life. And then they asked me to give practices that people could do on their own. So it's meant to be a self-directed, self-empowering book. And you, you could, you know, just open it up to any page and hopefully get some guidance that would help to bring some peace to your life in in a practical way. This is practical peace, and that's practical spirituality as yes. well. Yes, yes, and and it's something so needed now. And I love that it, that the word choice is in there, and it is a choice, right? It's always no, a choice. Yes, when you think of each day, how mm. many choices are are we have, and we might might not even be be aware that. Gosh, I'm making a choice. So whenever we can stop and say, is this a choice? That is this a good choice? Is this something that will bring benefit to myself and others? And each, you know, to have that be our guiding light, to really watch our choices and look at our choices. It affects our health, our mental state, our emotional state, all of it, our financial state. We make choices about everything. Right. You know? And yeah. we can direct those choices and create outcomes that are really good for us and abundant and happy and prosperous. Yeah. And it's a better way to live. You know, what, what, what have you encountered like when you were traveling in India, when you were in these schools and working with the police, what have you encountered that is the most challenging thing in the path of, of making the choice of forgiveness? What has stopped people from actually forgiving? I, I think that, you know, it, it's difficult if it's a situation of personal abuse in some way, whether sexual or, or physical abuse, that's very difficult. Um, 
murder. <laughs> it, it more murder. I cannot, I cannot even, you know, I'm, I cannot even. And, and that's yeah. why when I, it was really interesting when I saw the stories in Rubaru Roshni um, and, and how those people actually ended up meeting the person who murdered a family member um, and how they came, in some cases it took years, but how they came to forgiveness in that situation. And the people that I've talked to who came to forgiveness, once they um, are willing to listen and 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 be willing to understand what might have led to that, what's at the source of it, it um, opens up an avenue of, of forgiveness that, that they can see that that there's that forgiveness is possible and that it would freeze it, it's it's really to free us up from continuing to hold on to that event and be held hostage by it for the rest of our lives. So it, it's not I love everything. that. I, I yeah. loved what you just said. Being hostage. That's right. It, oh it, wow. It, we're held hostage by something if we just continue to talk about it all the time and, and we just fuel that fire, you know, and, and there's this one person who it could just simply be a heartbreak. They cheated on us and we hate them for it. It hurt. My God, it was humiliating. It broke our heart. And um, so that what relationship ends and we've all gone through that at some point. And it's like, well, gosh, how horrible. But yet is that it's poison, you know, and that's what there, there's another famous quote. It's like holding on to that hatred is like taking poison and hoping your enemy dies. <laughs> no, you're the one that's going to be affected by that. So free yourself by forgiveness. You know what you're sharing? Yes, free yourself by forgiveness. And uh, I have, I've been studying family constellations for years and uh, practicing and then helping others through. That's a tool just to get the golden nuggets of the past and move us into a very more actualized uh, present awareness to the present moment so that we can create our next moment, which is called for many the future, without losing our awareness of the present moment, which is the only thing that we have, right? But yes. being able to create future, have a vision, uh, leave a legacy. Uh, but one time I heard this from a Family Constellations mentor. He said, you know why sometimes it's good, uh, it, no, it's good, but the people get uh, they either um, they either behave like the killer of the like let's say let's say that uh, a man kills the dad of a little boy right yeah. and the little boy begins to behave like the killer and what this teacher said of family constellations to have compassion and begin to heal that he said you know why he becomes like the killer is because the killer took his dad and sometimes he who takes the life for the child is that he's who has the life. So it's so powerful to, for us to forgive the perpetrator and take back what they took from us. So yes. as soon as I forgive them, the lives of these beings that lost their lives are released back to where they belong. Well, wow, that's... Uh, it's very strong. It's very strong. You know, it's a, it requires a lot of courage to be able to see like, wow, you know, I'm doing exactly the same as this person or behavior because this person is not no longer the killer, is the is the vessel that has the life of the people that were lost. So you know it's stuff. So what we're trying to recover is the that what she he has. So I know this this could be this, this requires deeper like meditation and contemplation, but I, yes. I, I what I'm sharing is that. Your work on forgiveness, your books, the movements, uh, is an invitation for people to free themselves, to stop being hostage, to heal the inner terrorists within. Yes. And really bring back the dignity to life. Yes. That we have. Correct? Perfect. Perfect <sighs> summary. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, you are such you are such an emissary of peace for our whole world. Uh, true. I, I always said, you know, I heard someone telling me, you know, she's going to be nominated for the Nobel, uh, Nobel Peace Prize. Mm -hmm. And I can I can see that in the future for you. And, um, and 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 I know it's not only for you, it will represent a win for the movement of peace, of practical peace, not the peace of marketing. Right. That let's create war and then we'll sell peace. So people exactly. can buy. But the peace that comes from within. Yes. Choice. 
Yes. Hi. Yeah, I, I love your mission and your message. Is there anything else before we close? A blessing, uh, a message, 